Shalom and greetings, brothers and sisters in Yeshua HaMashiach, those who have the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach and keep the commandments of Elohim. Brother Nick here, Nicholas James Vanderlane. Today is the first day of the 12th month, so it's a Rosh Hodesh, so hopefully you're blowing your shofars. It's February 17th. It's Sunday, 2019. This video is being broadcasted from Frankfurt, Germany, titled Peace and Safety, the Pre-Sorrows Rapture, and the Good Man Returns. Just this last week in the news, there was a peace and security in the Middle East conference or get-together in Warsaw, Poland. Happened on February 13th through 14th. As you can see, Benjamin Netanyahu is right here. And here we have uh, Mike Pence and Mike Pompeo. So it was a big NATO meeting along with Benjamin Netanyahu. Jared Kushner was there. You probably clicked on that clickbait photo of him. He's not, I don't think there's a picture of him in here. Um, and it was a very interesting event because we know that peace and security are some uh, very important buzzwords. So I did a video titled the, uh, of several months ago, about maybe four or five months ago, titled the Pre-Travail, Pre-Sorrows, pre Pre-Travail, Rapture, 100% Proof. In this, I, I believe that the Ruach gave me like a doctrine to put together showing that, that this event happens before the travail, which is the beginning of sorrows. And in this video, I want to disclaim something real quick. I, in this video, I question and I limit the shelf life of the September 24th sign to one year. I suggest a year, but with further consideration, I wanted to bring up that Yeshua's, the sign of Yeshua's birth had a shelf life of approximately two years. People that are scoffers are going to scoff and mock this, that I'm trying to drag this sign out. But it appears that this was the sign. And just think about it, that Herod killed all the children two years and under after he questioned the Magi from the East, more than likely the wise men from the Philippines. So I want to bring your attention to these verses here. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, we have the Aramaic right here. Kind of has a different little meaning for the word tranquility, quietness, and tranquility. Here it's peace and safety in the Greek. But I want you to know that while it's present tense, so while they're saying peace and security, or peace and tranquility, or peace and safety, which is right here, it says, then sudden destruction will come upon them as uh, travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And so what I believe Paul is sharing with the Thessalonians, because the church at Thessalonica, they thought that the, the rapture had already happened. But no, this is the buzzword. This is what to look out for. While they're saying it is in present tense. So while they're saying it to get the deal done, or that's if it's the Greek, peace and safety, peace and security, right? Or when they're saying that uh, we got the deal in place, now it's peace and quietness, okay? So there's two ways to say it, before the deal or after the deal. That depends on the word choice, whether Aramaic or Greek appears. But what I want to bring to your attention is, here's the doctrine that I believe the Ruach uh, shared with me that I want to share with you guys that I shared with my previous video four or five months ago, travailing and the man-child. So this is used at least three times together in scripture. In the, in the scriptures that I found. And there might be more. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse uh, 1 through 5, But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For ye perfectly know that the day of Yah will come so as a thief in a night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as a, woman, as a travail upon a woman with child. So the travail on a woman with child. Travail is mentioned first, then woman with child, and they shall not escape, but ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief, not day and hour, but that day shall not overtake you as a thief, ye are all children of the light and children of the day, we are not children of the night or darkness, we Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 and 2, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her, ha her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child, child cried, prevailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. So this is a sign here that we receive. Let's talk about that sign that we saw. We believe, many people believe that we saw. 
she was travailing in the birth and pain to be delivered. But down here in Isaiah, it says that she, before she travailed, she brought forth. And before her pain came, she was delivered a man-child. Well, this is a sign. This sign is like a warning sign. It's a signal that this event is coming. Okay, just because we saw the sign in the heavens doesn't, believe, doesn't mean that the man-child had to come first. Because that, else, what's the point of having a signal? A signal is to show that this event is coming. And that's what we believe that we saw. And what I want to bring your attention to is that she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Her child was caught up unto Elohim and to his throne. So for the sake of a signal, it has to happen before the event. So it doesn't, it's not as according to Isaiah 66 verse 9, which we'll read again. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who, who hath heard such a thing, who hath seen such things, shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Multiple children here. Okay, and what I'd like to share with you, the earth bringing forth, the dead and Messiah going to rise first, and then we who are alive and living are going to be caught up together and gathered together in the clouds. Okay, then we for, so, for so ever shall be with our master, Yeshua. Okay, and we will come back to rule and reign with him, according to the order of Malek Zodok, king of righteousness, who he is. So that word there is Odin in the Greek. I don't know exactly how to say it, and it's the pain of child verse, and these are the beginning of that word Odin, regarding uh, birth pains and travail, uh, travail of birth pains, is also referred by Yeshua. That you, word in the Greek is used as the beginning of sorrows. So this is why I call it the pre-sorrows rapture. So if we go back here, before the pre-sorrows, before the beginning of sorrows, she brought forth. Before the beginning of sorrows came, she was delivered a man-child. So what are the beginning of sorrows? Yeshua is going to tell us in Matthew 4, 24. But here, as you can see, this is where the word is used four times in this um, tense. And it's used three times here in this tense. Okay, here's the same word, Odineo. This is Odin. This is Odineo, different tense. But it's being used here in Revelation 12, 2. That same word is used here in 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. And then Matthew uh, 24 8 and mark 13 8 and we're going to take a look at what these beginning of sorrows are because this is the beginning of sorrows and this is what i call the pre-sorrows rapture it happens before this event happens before what yeshua is going to identify as the beginning of sorrows so let's go ahead through matthew chapter 24 and yeshua went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple and yeshua said unto them see ye not all these things for verily i say Unto you there shall not be one, uh, not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And, and as he was on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, uh, Tell us when shall these, these, these things be. And this is my commentary right here in, in purple and red, speaking of the destruction of the temple. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? So there's a sign. And so there is going to be a sign, the Revelation 12 great wonder sign, possibly. Revelation 12, Great Wonder Side, that's the woman in travail. And he's about to talk about the sorrows, which is the travail, which I just proved to you from the scriptures, that it's the same word, okay? And the end of the world. And, the, and just so you know, the end of the world is the day of Yahweh, which consists of the beginning of sorrows, okay? Then the 70th week, and then of that 70th week, the final and great day, dreadful day of Yahweh, which is... I believe is going to be the 14th day of the seventh month, according to Enoch chapter 60. And I believe that that's when uh, the final day of judgment is, it appears. Okay? And Yeshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Messiah, and shall deceive many. And we know that after Yeshua died, many false messiahs have come. There's a list of uh, Jewish messiah claimants. Jewish Messiah claimants on Wikipedia, and uh, ever since, there's also been cults and popes 
and other just relax. I I got people commenting on my on my YouTube uh, videos sometimes saying that they're the Messiah. So it's just been crazy, right? Okay, now here we go. Okay, now, now this is the, t the another hint. You shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So what are those wars, rumors of wars? We've seen World War One, World War Two. We've seen a lot of other wars going on. Uh, we see Israel versus Hamas. That's a rumors of wars. That's kind of been been fought out for years. Israel versus Hezbollah. That's a rumor. Israel versus Iran, Syria, Turkey. Those are all rumors waiting that we're waiting to see happen. We have USA versus Russia, and we have NATO versus Russia. So these are big rumors of wars, and those are world wars right there. For nation shall rise against nation. We see that Israel versus Iran, Israel versus Syria or Turkey. And then also we see kingdom against kingdom, and that's what you have in the United States. It's like a kingdom. There's a lot of states in the United States, and Russia also has a lot of states inside of Russia. So kingdom versus kingdom, I guess you could say. It's Iran, Syria, Turkey, and Russia versus NATO and the United States. It's kingdom versus kingdom. Uh, and there shall be famines and pestilences in diverse places. So this is all World War III, I believe. All these are the beginning of sorrows, okay? So World War III, that's his words. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. That what, what we just read, so this is World War III. And so what that means is that, uh, going back to the slide before, um, before the beginning of sorrows, before the sorrows right here, that when she travailed, as you can see, travail and sorrows is the same word right here, okay? So before the sorrows, okay, she brought forth. So that means the rapture happened before the beginning of sorrows, before World War III, I believe, okay? Uh, before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. So before her sorrows came, before all those wars, the World War III, right, she was delivered a man-child. So, so let's take a look at some synoptic gospels, right? Mark 13 and Luke 21 are very similar to Matthew 24. These are the synoptic. The same teachings of Yeshua, but being recorded with different insight. And this is really layered, and we'll have to take a look at it. So Mark and Matthew both give us special insight into what the escape is from. Because there's an escape. We're escaping the beginning of sorrows, which we just saw. But they don't mention the escape. To hear about the escape, we got to go to Luke 21, verses 34 to 36. Because Luke 21 is talking about the same events, the same teaching of Yeshua, but he's the only one that has the escape. And that word escape is also included in the Aramaic text. So this is what we are. So Yeshua says, Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day, that day, come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. No, they're not going to see it, but this thing is going to happen. In, and once it starts, once that ball starts rolling, that avalanche starts coming down, it just starts snowballing. So, and Yeshua then says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. All of these things, he's talking about the beginning of sorrows. Okay, World War III and what's going to happen after that. So pray that you're worthy to escape all of these things that we see that's right on the doorstep that are going to come to pass and that you are going to stand before the Son of Man. Okay, so uh, we are going to give an account. When you're caught up, you're going to have to give that account before the Son of Man. Even though we're caught up in the clouds, it's going to be, it appears that that's what's going to happen spiritually as we're caught up. You're going to have that 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 account before the Son of Man and to stand before Him. And we know that we'll fall down completely, and Yahweh willing, He'll touch us and bring us up. Because it will be a very serious event when we stand before Yeshua HaMashiach in all of His glory. The only begotten Son of Yahweh. So, um, together I believe that uh, the escape, uh, this shows that we're escaping, and this is what I call the pre-sorrows rapture. This is hallelujah, I'll praise to Yah, uh, because that 
came from the Ruach. So let's read on. Let's continue on in Matthew 24, because I have some more for you. After the beginning of sorrows, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and, sh and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So I believe that these are those who are judged unworthy, who are here still after this event. They don't have works of keeping the Ten Commandments to go along with their faith. So their faith isn't a real faith to save them. And Enoch talks about this in Enoch 50, that he's going to have mercy on people. They're not going to be like have this esteem, but they're still going to be saved through the name of Yahweh. But, uh, but they're not going to have that esteem because... They didn't hear, they didn't, they're not doers of the words. They didn't doers of the word. They were hearers only deceiving themselves. Okay, they weren't keeping the commandments of Yahweh or striving to keep the commandments of Yahweh as we all strive to keep them because we're plagued by this flesh, right? But soon corruptible will put on incorruptible. And then shall many be offended and they shall betray one another and they shall hate one another. Okay, so there's going to be false brethren. And many of the false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. So there's going to be mass confusion. John and Daniel don't start. Uh, I don't believe John and Daniel, the two prophets, are not going to start until their ministry until the 15th day of the seventh month. So there could be some mass confusion in there. But I believe um, Eliyahu, or the one who comes in the double portion spirit of Eliyahu, like Elijah, Elisha, or Elishua. I've done a study on that, that it might be Elisha. Uh, or El Eliyahu, um, and the two witnesses, which will be Dan John and Daniel. Okay, um, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he, shall endure, but, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So my guess of uh, the two events, the wedding and the wedding party, don't work with this verse. I thought that there was going to be two raptures, one here and then another one after. It doesn't seem like that is like that. Now, please... A disclaimer on all this. This is just my best understanding, okay? Um, there's certain things like the Ten Commandments. I mean, that's true and true, okay? A lot of this is just my best understanding at the time. I'm learning just like you, brothers and sisters out there. I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the foreknowledge. You know, things are going to be revealed as we get closer. And so I'm just watching just like you all. And as Roy gives me information or gives me understanding, I share that with you, brothers and sisters out there, with hope that it edifies you. But it's not 100%, you know, 100%, 100%. You know, I'm just giving you my best understanding at the time. And I got some really interesting things in here I want to share with you. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as for witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. So this gospel, okay, there's only one gospel, not two. That's why this gospel is called the everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel means from the beginning to the end. It's eternal, okay? So don't get confused by the false doctrine uh, that's rolling around on YouTube that Scott Clark is promoting and all these other people call the rightly dividing movement of these two different gospels. There's only one. It's an eternal gospel, okay? And it says that uh, Revelation 14 6 says to be preached by one angel through mid-air. So maybe it's going to be broadcasted via uh, social media or something. But uh, maybe there's going to be a literal angel that's going to go around and preach it. But the message, quote, is fear Elohim and give glory to him. And um, that you can't, you know, the fear, of, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of understanding. It's the beginning of wisdom. Okay, fearing God. There's no fear in Christianity. Okay, people think that they can go ahead and make up their own religion, their own laws, and their own rules to their own religion, and they're deceiving themselves. I'm going to get into that later on, but that's spiritual idolatry, creating God and God's laws into your own image, your own interpretation. And that's a dangerous thing to do because the Ten Commandments are simple. As I proved from the Isaiah 28 messenger, the Isaiah 28 messenger is going to come, and he's going to, he's going to come, and he's going to preach the Ten Commandments, line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, okay, with stammering lips, which means he's going to speak with the stammer, and in another tongue, which is the language of English, possibly, I believe, he's going to preach these things to you to try to give you rest, but 
Uh, everybody's going to reject these commandments, the Ten Commandments, it appears. This is just an interpretation that I have. This is my understanding of it. But like I said, many Christians don't have the uh, fear of God. There's many people that do and keep his commandments. Hallelujah, all your brothers and sisters. Because Yeshua said, uh, those who are your brothers and your sisters are those who uh, uh, hear the commandments and do them. Okay? Hear his words and does them, which is keeping his commandments. Okay, so you're my brothers and my sisters out there, all you who have the faith and testimony of Yeshua and who keep the commandments of Elohim. Because after this message, this angel preaches this gospel, of the eternal gospel, everlasting gospel. So this is the same gospel from Adam all the way up to the final time. Fear Elohim and give glory to him. And then why do we know that this has to do with keeping the commandments? Because Revelation, these people are going to keep the commandments because just a couple verses later, in Revelation 14, 12, here is the patient of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Eloi, or Elohim, okay, and have the faith of Yeshua, Hamashiach, hallelujah. So these people are now keeping the commandments. Why? Because they missed out. They missed out on the event, I believe, okay? This is just my understanding interpretation. I hope some of you are getting fear, are getting fear that you could possibly miss out, that you could fear that you've deceived yourself, because that's what happens. You have to deceive yourself, and you believe a lie rather than believe the truth. I just had a big discussion with Tim Foster in his comment section on one of his videos, preaching against the Ten Commandments, and I left a comment against him. And it says in, in Isaiah 8, verse 20, if a prophet... If any man comes, okay, and he receives this prophet Byron Searle, who doesn't even knew, use the name of Yahweh, he doesn't even speak in his name, but it says that if any man comes preaching to you, and they don't and uh, they don't preach according to the law and the prophets, it says that there's no light in them, okay. So all of you people out there who don't preach according to the law and the prophets, there ain't no there's no light in you, and you guys need to really uh, look into yourself regarding that. So when you shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of Daniel the prophet, stand in the place, whoso read it, let him understand. Then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Then let him who be on the housetop not come down, nor take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And this is after the beginning of sorrows now. So verses 19 through, I guess, 20. I can't see it, this whole section over here because my screen's broken on... But uh, this is after the beginning of sorrows. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in winter, neither on that Sabbath day. So now they're keeping the Ten Commandments, okay? There's going to be a lot of people that are going to learn. Now, you're only judged for what you know. And I, like I said, I believe the rapture is going to be a rapture judgment. I believe, you know, we get an idea of this in the book of Enoch because he talks about those who, who worship the righteous law, okay, and that's the Ten Commandments. It's the royal law, the, the royal law of Malek, which means king, Zadok, of righteousness, King Yeshua, okay, the line of the tribe of Judah, according to the kingdom, king of David, that's his throne, we all know that. For there shall th then shall be great tribulation for as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall forever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. If you have, if So to me, this is my commentary again, it appears there is no access to the safe place, or no safe place at all, it appears. Or those who are there are there. I don't, I don't really truly understand that. But this is what it appears. Because there's going to be a lot of, for there shall be, Arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that it were possible they should deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Behold, I have told you before. Okay, this is emphasized because of our of, pre, of how prevalent it's going to be. That he's telling this us the before. Yeshua is emphasizing that there's going to be these people that are going to try to go out into the desert or go to this place or go to that place and say, let's go out here or let's go there because this is where he's at. But it appears to me that there's no access to this place. Um, and he's telling them that uh, he's emphasizing that he, he told us beforehand. So, uh, be, therefore, if they shall say to you, again, here's tell, behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret place, 
secret chambers, believe it not. For as lightning cometh out of the east and of the west, and shineth even unto the west, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. So now we have, he, now Yeshua is talking about the coming. Why is he talking about the coming? Because it appears that the appearing might have already happened. This is the question mark, okay? This is a question mark, okay? This is just my best understanding that I can give to you right now. I'm, I, you know, I might see other things that I might disagree, but this is the best that I have. For wheresoever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. So it looks like if you're going out here into the desert and following all these people, it looks like you're going to be dead, okay? You're just going to, you're going to die, okay? Then immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark, and the moon shall not give her, her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn. Um, and shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send out of angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the, from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So it appears that this is at the end, and my guess, as you can see the question mark, that this gathering is to protect, protect the elect during the fire judgment when he comes back. That's just a possibility. That's how I might understand it now. That was the after the beginning of sorrows. Now he's going to switch over here in verse 32. Okay, they ended with verse 31. And this is going to be the timing of the beginning of sorrows. So now it looks like he's going to go back to the timing of the beginning of sorrows. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Okay, that's Israel, as many people believe. I believe that's the case when the branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near. Okay, so now since we've seen Israel, look at all these things that we've seen. Okay, wars and rumors of wars. Know that it's near. Even at the very doors. Well, that's interesting. Doors. These doors are like uh, chambers. The prophet Enoch talks about uh, these chambers. And I believe Yeshua is going to come out of one of these chambers. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass, the generation of the fig tree, till all these things be fulfilled. And heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no not the angel of heaven but my father only so the father only look at this okay I emphasize the word and here this combination the day and hour combination only the father knows it's a combination of day and hour he didn't say month and day he didn't or or month day and year or month and day he only said day and hour so I emphasize the word and here, which means that more than likely uh, we could know the singular day by itself, but we won't know the hour of that day. And I'll go on, he, and I think there's another line that proves this here. So everybody says, oh, you don't know the day or hour if you're watching, okay? I believe that Yeshua is saying here that we can know the day, but we won't know the hour. Remember we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Verse, what was it, 3 or 2 or 1 at the beginning of this? Paul says, you're going to know the day. But Paul never says about knowing the hour because he, he's, he's writing his testimonies according to the testimony of Yeshua because Yeshua said we won't know the hour. Paul says we won't know the hour. Paul says we would know the day. Yeshua is going to tell us that we're going to know the day coming up again. Okay? Okay, how he's going to do that by omitting the hour. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah... Uh, where before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered in the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two shall be in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken and the other left. So apparently if they're grinding at the mill, and they're in the field, apparently this event's not going to happen on a Sabbath or new month or possibly like a sabbath festival like the first day of unleavened bread the seventh day of unleavened bread the day of shavuot uh, unless the circuit of the sun as the sun goes around the earth okay I, right that day it could be the following day right so if it's on shavuot on like the 15th day of the third month at nighttime, two are in the bed 
Well, the new day has already started in like Australia and over to the east. So it could happen like on like a Shavuot or something. But let's get back to it. Watch therefore, for ye know not at what hour your Lord doth, your master doth come. So we don't know the hour. He did not, now he doesn't say you don't know the day and hour. He leaves out day. So you don't know what hour. Well, he, so that means to me, honestly, this means to me that we, would know, we can find out the day, Yahweh willing, that he'll give that to somebody to share with everybody else what day the master comes. Now, I can't say for certain, but I'm gonna, we got, I got something exciting right here, close by. So, so for everybody that says you don't know the day or hour, those people aren't watching. Those people are asleep. Those people are not watching. Those people are not listening to Yeshua's words here. Yeshua emphasizes we won't know the hour, but he never said we won't know the day. We can know the day, I believe. But know this, this is what Yeshua says, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch, okay, now, now this is what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have allowed his house to be broken up. So now Yeshua's given us a clue here, okay? Two clues, to the hour, to what watch, and a watch is like a three-hour span, okay? And if anybody out there has an idea on what uh, watch he might be coming in, that would be great. Yeshua gives us the good man clue regarding the rapture right here. The good man of the house. We've seen the good man. The good man is mentioned seven times in the Western canon. So the good man, we're going to get into the good man in the next slide. I've got some exciting things to share with you. Okay. Therefore, Yeshua now says, Therefore be ye ready also, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master hath made him ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master... Uh, is that servant whom his master, when he cometh, finding, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all of his goods. So, the good man clue is what I want to share with you, brothers and sisters out there. And could the good man return February 19th, 2019, the super full moon? The return of the good man. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 19 through 20. For the good man is not at home. He is gone on a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home on the day appointed full moon. This word for full moon is right here, cassette. And it's translated as full moon according to the Strongs. This word is only used twice in the scriptures. Once by the psalmist, I want to say Asaph, and the other by King Solomon, I believe. Asaph was in the court of David, and Asaph, I believe, would have known Solomon, and Solomon had this word. And this word has perplexed me for several years now. And I've mentioned and talked about this word beforehand. And as you can see, this person's comments are, it's the first day of the full moon, also the whole time of the full moon. So it is often used here by these two people. The etymology, so how this word is, comes about, is not clear to this person. For it is not satisfactory to say that it's called the whole moon, being the covered moon, being, being then covered with light. Verbs covering, he says, are often applied to the sense of hiding, but never, as far as this person knows, to that of giving light. But uh, don't we all want to be covered in light? Hallelujah. That's, a, that's a, hope, a blessed hope that we have, to be covered in salvation, the salvation of Yeshua Mashiach. Hallelujah. So I want to be covered in light. So this is really interesting right here. All right. Now, this word kase translated in Proverbs as full moon, 720. If you look here, there's 21 instances. There's 10 instances, 10 tra English translations where the translator said full moon. Other times, there's some really weird translations. And then day appointed. And so what I want to point out is that a lot of people believe that this is full moon. There's nothing in there called moed. It's just kase. Yom kase is the word. We're going to take a look at it. This is from Bible Hub right here. And look, here, as you can see, this is the word right here in, in Psalm 81, verse 3. And this is the word in Proverbs 20, verse 7. 
Notice the different spelling. Okay, it's bakasa here, and it's hakasa here. So bakasa and hakasa, you have the hey here. So hakasa here. And so this, I showed this to a guy who's very fluent in Hebrew, a Hebrew scholar, and Warren Cunningham. Shalom, brother, if you hear this, that they've never seen how the same word can have different spellings twice, but be the same word. I mean, if anybody, scholars out there, anybody out there, Alan Horvath, anybody that has pictographed Hebrew would be great to get some understanding. Uh, the hey, obviously, is part of Yahweh's name and Yeshua's name that's in here, but it's not the Yod. But this is interesting. When it talks about here, perhaps this is this word came from the Aramaic, from the Assyrian language, having to do with the headdress or the cap, also the full moon of the moon. So who knows, okay? But this is an interesting word here of King Solomon and Asaph. Now that we've established that this day of this covering, the, or the full moon, okay, the good man, right, because Yeshua is the good man, you remember he said he sent the good man he sent Peter and John I believe and James to to prepare the to the good man to prepare the house, Passover and where who was the good man the good man was the Zadok priest the the that's the good man and Yeshua is Molech Zadok he comes he's king and priest so so full moon brothers and sisters largest super full moon of the Gregorian year is February nineteenth two thousand and nineteen we just had one in. January, we're going to have one in March, but we have one here, and it's in February. It's February 19th. It happens at 5.53, so right, the moon rises. Um, I think the sun will be set, at, or and it's going to rise, and right after it rises, it's going to go full, and it's a super moon. So when it rises, it's going to be huge, and then it goes smaller and smaller. When it rises, it's going to be basically in conjunction with Regulus, the king star. Okay, one of the royal stars that people believe that the Yeshua's sign was associated with. So this sign, this moon is going to be this full moon. Okay, the good man returns on a full moon, and the full moon is in conjunction with Regulus here. Uh, I forgot which channel pointed that out. This scripture here that I had in my previous video, Numbers twenty four seventeen. This is a prophecy. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and shall destroy all the children of Sheth. What's interesting is this is sun set. But earlier that day, Venus and Saturn are in conjunction at sunrise in Sagittarius, the rider with the bow. And Yeshua actually might be that rider of the bow conquering to conquer. We have Venus and Saturn in that constellation rising in the east at morning time on the morning of the 19th. So what's important about the February 19th? It's the third day of the 12th month. It's the second temple. It's when the second temple was completed and dedicated. It's Hanukkah. It's real Hanukkah. Okay. And Yeshua said, hey, there's going to be one greater than this second temple that he was in. Remember? The, the Jews go 39 years. It took to make this, basically Herod's work. Yeshua said there's going to be one greater than, than, than the, that temple was here, was him. And he is the head of the temple. We are the body of that temple. We are, uh, we are the temple of the, of the living Elohim. Okay? If the Ruach HaKodesh dwells in you. And also, I believe in my last video, got to go back and watch that last video, this is when I believe Yeshua turned, this is the day that I believe Yeshua turned water into the wine in Cana. This is the wedding feast at Cana. That it happened in the 12th month, on the third day of the 12th month, which happens to be the third day of the week. And then Yeshua is in Jerusalem here for the second temple dedication in the winter, not Hanukkah. So I believe he was here before he went to the, to the, ex, the execution stake for his Passover. And I believe I proved that in my previous video. So there's a lot of events that happen on this day. And isn't there like a double portion? Wasn't this day double blessed? When it was created in the in the creation week, I have to take a look at that, but I thought that that was the third day. We'll have to take a look at that as well. If it doesn't happen on that full moon, there is another full moon coming on the 20th or the 21st. It's kind of hard to say. It happens at 3 o'clock in the morning 
on the 21st, which that means that the sun hasn't ro rose, risen yet, which means it's actually the 20th, excuse me, which is why I have it circled both 20th and the 21st here, which is the day of the great sign, which is interesting to take a look at, and it's also, or could be considered the first day of the first month. So this is interesting as well to consider either one of these two days because Yahweh's day start at sunrise, not sunset according to all the events in scriptures, and I've made a video about that. There's one place in Jubilees that I found that almost that kind of contradicts that, that I haven't had spent time on to understand it, but other than that, everything in the Torah and the Tanakh all point to that the day begins at sunrise, not sunset. So this is something to consider right here. I'll make another video on that if that's the case. And finally, I want to leave this with you, okay? If you're excited about the good man, that the good man could return on the new moon, that's in verses 19 and 20 of Proverbs, verse 7. But to be fair to you, I have to bring up the beginning of the chapter of Proverbs because this is warning about the adulteress and the adulteress of committing adultery physically and breaking the Ten Commandments is one as well as the spiritual adultery of creating your own laws and your own rules and making them your own rules into uh, making your own religion. Okay, here it says right from the bat, my son, keep my words and lay up my commandments within thee. Okay, keep my commandments and live and my law as the apple of thine eye. So my question to all of you Christians out there, sincerely, okay, is how can you read this and just dismiss this? This is life. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Okay, bind them on the fingers, write them on the tablet of the heart, of thine heart. Okay, just like the Ten Commandments were placed inside the Ark of the Covenant, they're written on the walls of our heart. You're going to listen to them or not? Write them on the tablet of thy heart. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister. Call understanding thy kinswoman. Okay, what is the beginning of wisdom? What is the beginning of understanding? Fear, which I talked about, which is the eternal gospel. Fear Yahweh. Fear Yahweh for the judgment. Fear Yahweh for not keeping his commandments. Fear Yahweh for breaking his commandments. Fear Yahweh for lying against his commandments. Make repentance. Make teshuva. You've been flattered by the strange it's woman, which flattereth with her words. This is spiritual fornication, spiritual idolatry. Okay? For at the window of my house, I look through my casement, and behold, among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a man void of understanding, passing through the street near a corner. He went away to her house in the twilight in the evening, in the black and dark dark night. And behold, there met a woman there with the tire of a harlot and a subtle of heart. Ooh, subtle heart? That's religion for you. That's Christianity for you. That's all those men for the last 2,000 years who have denied the truth of the commandments and have layered and layered and layered little tiny subtle changes in your scriptures. Okay, leading you astray, you know, giving you these subtle words, okay? This is the attire of a harlot, this is what the scriptures say. She is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. Now she is without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. It's everywhere. World religion is everywhere. Satan has come in and corrupted all men's religions like a roaring lion seeking who can devour. He's come in and, and deceived the whole world through all of man's religions, even Christianity. Okay, so she caught him and kissed him with an impudent face and said unto him, I, I have peace offerings with me. On this day I paid my vows, therefore uh, came I forth to meet thee diligently to seek thy faith, and I found thee, uh, and I decked my bed with coverings of tapestry and carved works uh, with fine linen, carved works, idolatry, with fine linen of Egypt. I perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon, Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. This is religion, the harlot, harlot religion, lying and deceiving, lying against what? The simple commandments of Yahweh. Okay, they are simple and true. Okay, again, all right, when I was in Jerusalem, the Ruach showed me this, and my wife confirmed it, hallelujah, that the ten, that line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, the Ten Commandments, okay, 
It says that he was going to, that the messenger of Ephraim is going to give them to you, that you might find rest for your souls, okay? That you might fall on them and that you might be taken by them. But many people ain't going to hear that message according to Isaiah 28. Many people don't want the commandments of Yahweh. You want rebellion. You want your false religion. And this is what it leads. It leads into death. Okay, if you want to keep the commandments, keep his commandments and live. You strive to keep them. We're plagued by the flesh. We break them all the time. I break them in my heart. We can break them like that. We try to strive to keep them. There's a lot of times where we keep them. I keep them, right? You see the woman, uh, attractive woman half naked walking down the street. You don't go there with your eyes. You don't go there in your heart, okay? But we're in this flesh. It fails sometimes, okay? Even Elijah says that he was a man uh of the same passions we are. He prayed every day for three and a half years and caused it not to rain, but he was of the same flesh that we are. Paul said, Paul, brother Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the scriptures, right, of the New Testament, he said of the writings of his letters, he said that, you know, he does the things that he doesn't want to do, and he, and he doesn't do the things that he wants to do. And who can deliver him from this wretched body of death? And then he praises Yeshua HaMashiach, hallelujah. Because he's going to, because of that. But he knows the war between the flesh that wants to do those things, right? Let alone in thought and in our hearts, let alone in action. Yahweh forbid we don't do those things in action, okay? Uh, when, when sin brings forth full, full blown, it brings forth death. But we, we are in this flesh. So that's spiritual fornication, making your own rules, denying the commandments, not loving the righteous law, the righteous commands. Keep his commandments and live. Yeshua said, he was forgiven much, love much. We, have you been broke, broken the Ten Commandments? You forgive much? Do you love much? Well, you should keep. He says, if you love me, then keep my commandments. So if you really do love him, why aren't you doing what he says? That's called hypocrisy. That's called being a hearer of the word and not a doer only. Deceiving your own selves like James said. The Apostle Jacob, James said that that's what it is. You're deceiving yourself. So, um, look, the good man is not home. He's on a long journey. He's taking a bag of money with him and he'll come home on the full moon. Is this the full moon Yeshua's going to be coming back on? Or is it going to be the next one? I don't know. All I know is that if you hear these things, you should repent. Repent of putting off the commandments and not striving to live by them. Okay? If you love them, you keep them. You strive to keep them. Okay? It says, strive ye to enter into the straight gate. It says, for broad is the way, and wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in. That has one meaning, and also has, that is also a prophecy that I shared. Watch my video on the Damascus Gate, where I show you where the two witnesses are going to die. But the straight gate leads to life. The straight path, the straight path that leads to life. Okay, my last name actually means from the lane, or from the narrow path. So it leads to life, and the path that Yeshua is talking about is the path of his commandments that he wrote with his own fingers, and his father spoke audibly, okay, two witnesses, father and son, testifying of the commandments to the children of Israel. And there was a blood covenant made. And we were grafted in, if you're grafted into Israel, and into the promises of Abraham and into Israel, if you're grafted into Israel, right, the natural branches were taken out, okay, into that root. We've been grafted in. We've been grafted into the blood covenant of Yeshua, keeping his commandments. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So, for the good man is not at home. He's gone on a long journey. He's taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. So, the good man's wife committed, she was a harlot. She committed all these adultery on him. Uh, with her fair speech, she caused him to yield with flattering lips, she forced him, the, the man that walked by. He goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Uh, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to my words of my mouth, attend to the words of my mouth, let not thine heart decline to her ways, to the ways of the harlot, your harlot religion, harlot Christianity, okay? Go not astray to her paths, okay? Now you're going to say, well, that's kind of harsh, Nick. You're judging all these Christians. Look, 
You're only judged for what you know, okay? All these things were covered up a long time ago. There's been so much deception. You're only covered up for what you know. And you know what? You're accountable for what you know. You're accountable for hearing these words in this video, okay? So, uh, for she hath cast out many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Uh, those who have uh, been slain by the harlot religion. Her house is the way to hell and going down to the chambers of death. You should fear Elohim right now and hear the eternal gospel, the everlasting gospel of fearing Elohim and going and keeping his commandments. And keeping his seventh-day Sabbath as part of the commandments. Okay, Striving to keep the seventh-day Sabbath as best as you know when the seventh-day Sabbath is, is part of it. Okay, Not saying that it's officially Sunday according to the Catholic Church and the Protestant religion of Christianity. Okay, Going back to whatever calendar that the best that you have is what matters. And as we come to the faith and the truth of Yahweh's true calendar, well, we just move along and we keep it. You're not justified. You can't be saved by um, keeping the commandments. Okay, you're saved by faith, but if you're, you have a true saving faith, you will do what your master says, which is keep his commandments. You realize that you broke them. You were a slave to sin. When you're a slave, okay, you can't do nothing but break them because you're a slave to sin, and a sin is breaking the commandments. But once you've been forgiven, you come to faith in Yeshua, and you receive the forgiveness of sin, you've been forgiven and freed from the, the breaking those commandments, uh, freed from the penalty of breaking those commandments, now you can keep them out of love for what your, your Savior, your professing Savior, did for you. So, um, brothers and sisters, or everybody out there who's listening, not the brothers and sisters, because brothers and sisters, they, you've already judged yourself, okay? And it's a good thing to always do, to judge ourselves that we be not judged. I'm not pronouncing judgment on no man. Judgment is given to the Son, but it says, judge yourself that you be not judged. For if we were to judge ourselves, we should not be judged. 1 Corinthians 11.31. So people out there, please judge yourself. I don't judge no man. Judgment is committed to the Son. I am warning you that you might be false faith. You might have deceived yourself because you believed a lie. And you don't want to do what your teacher says. And if you're not going to listen to your quote-unquote Savior and keep his commandments that he spoke with his own, or he wrote with his own fingers on the tablets, and his father on Mount Sinai at the same time, during the same event, not at the same moment, but at the same event, when Moses was on the mountain, Jebel Allah's, um, he spoke the laws of God, okay? Uh, Yahweh spoke the commandments, his laws, okay? So please, repent. Fear Elohim for not keeping them. Realize that you have deceived yourself and keep them. Don't fall by the wayside. Let this message get into good soil in your heart, not on the wayside or in the crack on the rock. So hopefully you come out of Babylon, come out of the harlot, and keep the commandments of Elohim. Because in Revelation 22, it says, uh, those who, have, uh, who keep the commandments have the right to the tree of life and get to enter into the city. And outside the city, are, are and if you can read the offenses of the people that are outside the city, those are all people that are breaking the commandments. Whoremongers and dogs, these are adulterers and murderers. Or Sabbath keepers is not mentioned in that list. But listen, we already said that. Yeshua said, hey, pray that your flight be not in winter or on the Sabbath. Okay? That's because the Sabbath, we do our best with the Sabbath to understand the calendar. You're not justified um, by keeping them. You're justified by your faith. But if your faith is true, you will keep them. Okay, and it's proof that your faith, faith without works is dead faith. So I'm signing off, and shalom to all of you who receive this message. Keep the commandments of Elohim, or make teshuva and repentance, means change and do and keep his commandments after hearing this message. Peace and shalom to you and Yeshua HaMashiach, and to anybody else out there who wants to keep on going on and playing, playing church, there's no peace. And I don't know why you're watching my channel. Uh, if you're not going to hear these words, because these are the only words that I have. These are the words of life. I'm signing off.